What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to try to make this training quick because I literally only have 30 minutes and I have to leave to get to a meeting. Um, but I wanted to get this recorded so you guys could see a change, a big change, well, relatively big change that I've made as of late in my workflow. I basically abandoned style sheets inside of Oxygen Builder. I'm going to show you why, and then I'm going to show you the new process, the new workflow that I'm using. But here's the questions that I will ask you to get you intrigued. Would you like a faster method of writing custom CSS in Oxygen? Would you be able to, would you love to be able to see your changes in real time, both in the builder and on the front end of the website without refreshing? And would you like the ability to write SAS and not just CSS, not just vanilla CSS, but full capabilities of SAS? And not only that, see your SAS live in real time, both in the Oxygen Builder and on the front end. I think the answer is absolutely yes. And that's why I've switched my process over to this new process, which I'm about to show you right now. So let me go ahead and dive in here. So I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll move slow so that everybody can uh, stay with me. I'm also going to not just show you this new workflow. I will give you an introduction, let's say, to two very basic things that are available to you in SaaS. Because for those of you who have not experimented with SaaS yet, I would like to get you maybe moving in that direction. And then I want to know from you, drop a comment below if you want to see more SaaS tutorials. So just say more SaaS in the comments below. All right. Okay. Let's add a section here. Now this part of it, I'm just going to whip up really quick. I'm going to be using um, automatic CSS uh, utility classes. So I'm just going to do BG base ultra light for an ultra light background color of my base. I'm going to add a div here. And what we're going to do is just quickly style up an article card, but instead of using oxygen to style it, and instead of writing custom CSS in the style sheets area, we're going to use my new workflow method. All right. So I'm going to do grid of three here for a three column grid. We're going to have a gap of M. We're going to say that on medium devices, there's one column, and then I'm going to stretch to make sure all my cards are equal height. So just like that, I have a perfectly responsive grid set up, ready to go. So now I'm going to add a div. This is going to be my article card, and I'm going to give it the class of article card just like that. Now, if you've watched my BIM tutorial, you know how great BIM is. And I will say this, SAS is like, it's like superpowers for writing BIM. It's really, really awesome. Uh, so you'll see that as, as we get there. I'm going to keep my... Uh, structure panel open here. Oh, and I just remembered, people have been asking me, they're like, Kevin, you've got to make your display bigger uh, when you do these tutorials. Okay, so let's see if, let's see if that's better. Uh, let me see what our framing looks like. Okay, yeah, I think we're all good. Okay, so you guys should be able to see this better. I am going to rename this. This is going to be our grid. And then here, just so you guys can see the organization in the structure panel is going to be my article card. And then what I'm going to do is add a div in there, and that's going to be my article card, double underscore uh, image wrapper. We'll just keep it nice and simple. And then I'm going to add an image to that. That's going to be my featured image, uh, which I'm just going to call image for the sake of brevity here. Article card, double underscore image. And then I'm going to grab my entire article card. We're going to add another div. This is going to be the body. So article card, double underscore body. And then inside the body, I'm going to have a heading and I'm going to have text and I'm going to have a link. So I, I, I'm a big fan of just quickly adding my elements to things and then I style it after the fact. I just, I know what elements I'm going to need um, and then I style it after all at once kind of. You don't have to do that. You can do it either way. You can style as you go. Uh, if you're more of a beginner, you may have to style as you go, just so you guys okay, see how things are going to work and come together. But, you know, like, don't feel like you have to do it the way I'm doing it. Uh, it's just, it's how I do things lately. All right. So, and that may change. I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop rambling. All right. So that's my text. Did I add my link? I don't think I added, added my link. So I'm going to add a text link here. Excellent. I'm going to grab this, make sure that it's an H3 and not an H1. And then I'm going to give all of these things custom classes. So I already gave the wrapper a custom class of article card body. I need to give this article card double underscore heading. 
This needs to be article card text. And this needs to be article card link. Okay, article card link. Just I'm just keeping this nice and simple. This thing is ready to style up, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now I wanna show you the downside, one of the reasons, big reasons why I'm leaving Oxygen style sheets behind. So if I want to start writing CSS to style this now, and of course you can use the builder to style these things, okay? But we're talking about writing custom CSS and we're talking about the ability to use SAS. And we're talking about workflow and things like that. So I'm gonna do all of this with CSS, really with SAS. And um, yeah, just for the purposes of the tutorial, so you guys can see the workflow. So I am going to open the style sheets area. And I want you to notice one thing when I do this, okay? I'm gonna come down to cards here, uh, which is just blank. But notice that it takes over like half my screen. It's like taken over with the style sheet and it shrinks the website view that I'm looking at down into this little column. And if you're on a smaller screen, this is even worse, but like it makes what you're doing kind of hard to see. The workflow in general is also broken here. Now it's a little bit better in 4.0 than it was in 3.9. But let's say I write a bunch of nonsense, right? Write a bunch of CSS and then I'm like, ah, I actually need to go add more components. For those of you I was just talking about, you have to kind of add a component style, add a component style, add a component style. If you're having to do any of that with custom CSS, you're gonna be bouncing back and forth a lot. And here's what that looks like. You have to bounce back, Typically, you have to get back into your structure panel for certain things, maybe add an element, move an element around, whatever you're having to do at that time. And because you went into the structure panel, you now are no longer in the style sheets area. So if you wanna go back to the style sheet to write something, you've gotta go style sheets and then choose the style sheet and then go back. And if you're working on a long style sheet, guess what you gotta do? Scroll down, right? Find the area you were working in, make the edits, Okay, and then, oh, I gotta add something else, another element. So now you're back in the builder, back into the, where's my structure panel? Okay, there it is, back in the structure panel. If you've got a long structure panel, cause you're working on a big page, you gotta scroll in the structure panel. And then you're like, oh, gotta go back to styling. All right, so you go back to the style sheets. Where is it, where is it? Oh, it's right there. Go back to here, go scroll all the way down. Like it is insane. The workflow is absurd. And I've been like, there's gotta be, I need something better. I need something better. I need something better. Now, I didn't just wanna use, I could use something external for writing custom CSS, but it's not worth that much hassle to me if I can't have extra superpowers, if I can't have extra capabilities. But when the ability to write SAS came along and the ability not only to write SAS, but to see my changes in real time, not just on the front end, not just on a preview, but in the builder itself without refreshing the builder, guys, that's a game changer, absolute game changer. So let's set that up right now. Let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna go to the back end. We're gonna go to the admin. I'm going to go all the way out here. And wow, it's going real slow today. I'm gonna go to plugins. I'm gonna show you this plugin. It's called WP Codebox. And now I've used advanced scripts. I've used scripts organizer. I have left both of those behind. I am all in on WP Codebox. I love WP Codebox. I love the UX. I love the cloud snippets feature that it has. It's immensely powerful, especially for an agency or a freelancer that's working on multiple websites. I'll do a whole thing on WP Codebox, but this is what I'm using. I wanna show you how to set it up. So we're gonna go to WP Codebox, very easy. All right, I'm gonna click on new snippet. Now this may look different than when you first do it because you can go to the settings area and you can change the layout of WP code box. You can go to dark mode, which I'm in right now, okay? So I am just going to click on new snippet, but for you, it may look a little bit different. You can get it to look like, I'm gonna, I'll do a code box tutorial on, on how I've got it all set up and what I use it for and all that. I'll do that separately. But for now, for my new snippet, what I'm gonna do is just write global CSS. Now, you actually don't have to do global. You could do my card CSS, my this CSS, my that CSS. They don't support SAS partials yet. It, that's coming apparently. And because they don't support SAS partials, I would recommend just doing a global CSS style sheet. Because remember, this isn't normal CSS. We're gonna be writing SAS. So I'll do global CSS and under type, I'm gonna choose SCSS or SAS. Now, 
check this out. You can do a whole bunch of stuff, right? JavaScript, JavaScript external file. You got less. I'm just going to do SAS for now. But when I'm selling you on WP Code Box, right? Because it's amazing. And it's what I've switched to. And it's what I recommend other people use. It is now my official recommendation. I'm using this as an example, but keep in mind, there's so many other uses for WP Code Box. Then I'm going to get into those in future tutorials. So it's not just get WP Code Box so you can do this one thing. It's WP Code Box is great for lots of different things. All right, so I've chosen SAS. How to render the SAS. I'm going to choose external file. I am going to now hit save. And after I hit save, this thing becomes available right here. And this is the key, auto reload changes. I also need to enable uh, this snippet altogether or this style sheet altogether. Now I am ready to rock and roll. Now, just to ensure that all of my tabs are up to date, I'm going to refresh this and I'm going to refresh my builder. Now, remember, I get to leave style sheets in Oxygen behind. I don't have to do any styling in those style sheets, which means my builder interface gets to stay open in full screen and my style sheet gets to stay open in full screen. And if I have a long style sheet and I'm, I'm scrolled down working toward the bottom, when I create something new, I save changes and I want to go see them, I don't have to leave this area and I don't have to leave my scroll position. Everything is exactly how I want it at all times. Same thing here. My structure panel is open. If I have a long page, long structure panel, and I'm scrolled down there, I'd never have to leave that to go do anything with my styling, right? I'm decoupling them. So all we're doing now is a double tab or a dual tab setup where I have my styling going on in tab one and I have my editing going on in tab two. I could have a live preview of my front end on three, but I'm gonna show you, I actually don't even need that anymore either, okay? But anyway, let's start doing some stuff with our styling. Let's quit the you know rambling on about how great Codebox is and let's actually get something accomplished. All right, so I'm gonna grab global CSS here and we're just gonna test something. Um, I'm gonna try to change the whole, um, well, let's, yeah, let's just add padding to the card. How about that? Let's do something super easy. So I'm gonna do article card and then I'm gonna do padding and I'll just do something, you know, standard, 2M. And we look at it, right? Here is our article card right there. And you can see the padding in there. Get this guys, I'm in the builder. Like that's magic, right? I've, I just wrote it here in WP code box. I did not refresh the builder. Watch this again. I'm not gonna refresh the builder. Background color, if I can type, background color, white. It just happened. I didn't refresh the builder, right? You know, if I had to refresh the builder, we'd be waiting like five seconds, right? It's better in 4.0. It's better in Firefox, whatever. But you understand, right? We would have saw a spinning wheel. We didn't see a spinning wheel. This shit is instant. It is instant. Let me go to the front end. It's already there on the front end. I didn't reload the front end. It's already there. It's auto reloading changes, okay? So that is absolutely phenomenal. I'll prove it to you again. Look, no border radius here. No border radius here. Let's add a border radius. Border radius of 1M. I hit save. By the way, I'm hitting Command S on my keyboard when I'm in code box to save my changes. And it's already done. And it's already done. Okay, now look what I said. I don't actually need this live editing tab right here. I can do this. I can hit this little preview button in WP Code Box if I want to. And I can navigate to that page called live editing and check that out. Now my website doesn't actually have a background color, so it's rendering this as dark up here. That may happen to you. So I'm just gonna go into body and I'm gonna say background color. Man, I cannot type today, is white. And boom, it just updates. So now everything is good to go. So now I'm getting the only issue here, and I'm again, I'm working at 1920 pixels. Like, so I'm, I have a 32 inch monitor. I should be seeing a lot more than what I'm seeing right here is you're gonna kind of get that squished view again. So um, on a normal, my normal resolution, it's actually not that big of a deal. It looks normal, but on this, it kind of squishes everything in. So I'm gonna get rid of the preview. I much prefer to just have a front end tab open. So I'm doing like three tabs, right? I can see what I'm doing in the builder. I can see what I'm doing on the front end and I can see what I'm doing in Codebox with my styling at all times. 
This is just a phenomenal workflow, right? Because as I said, if you have a long style sheet where you need to be in a certain position on it, you have a long page where you need to be in a certain position of the page, and then you wanna be able to view the front end as well, and you want everything seamlessly changing and adjusting, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Now, let's take a look at SaaS, because remember, this isn't just so I can have a little bit better user experience when writing custom CSS, I get to leverage the full power of SaaS. Now, SaaS is a, there's a, it's a depth, it's an in-depth topic, right? And if you want more tutorials on SaaS, drop a comment below and say more SaaS, and I will give you guys more SaaS. I'm going to give you a very basic introduction. I'm going to give you two things that you can experiment with and practice, two techniques that you can experiment with and practice with SaaS. One of them is nesting, and the other is variables, okay? Now there's variables in regular CSS, but they work differently in SAS and they have extra superpowers in SAS. We're not gonna get too deep into it because I don't wanna lose people, but I'm gonna give you a little introduction. You'll you'll see a little bit of the uh, sauce, okay? All right, so first things first, I don't like that border radius. Um, so I'm gonna go with like 0.25M. Uh, by the way, you can also use regular variables here. Like here's a variable from automatic CSS for a small radius. And if I look, it's picking that up, right? Both on the front end and in the builder automatically. So no problems with using your normal variables, no problems with leveraging automatic CSS inside your custom style sheets. Let's talk about nesting now. I have um, a problem here. One is that the padding applied to my entire card and I don't want that to happen. I want the, the image to touch the edges of the card, and I want this area in here to have the padding. That's why I created a body wrapper. So what I'm gonna do is take the padding off my article card, and I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna work on a technique called nesting. And this is what I said, there's superpowers when you're using BIM and SAS together. All right, so if I use the AND symbol, an ampersand, and then I do a double underscore, and then I target the body, I am now styling the article card body. It knows it's gonna create a new line of code for me and it's gonna append this double underscore body to article card, which means I'm now targeting the article card body. And here I can say my padding is gonna be the 2M and I hit Command S to save and I go check on the front end. It's already there waiting for me. The changes were instant, already there waiting for me. The image is now touching the edges. The padding is now inside the body of the card where I wanted it. Now I also wanna space all of these elements out. So what I'm gonna do, still inside my body, I'm gonna display flex. Now here's another cool thing, watch this. Flex, look, it's, it's giving me, and I don't think this happens inside of, even in 4.0, inside of, let's see if it does. Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. There's none of this. So like if I was writing um, article card and I said, this, yeah, it doesn't give you any auto suggesting, nothing, right? But using WP code box, I have all this auto suggesting for me. So flex direction, I'm gonna do column and then I'm just gonna use a simple gap and we're gonna do a 1M gap. I'll go back and look, real time it updates and it shows me the gap that I'm working with. Now I can actually change my text here. This is my article heading and it's kind of long. All right, and then I can get some lorem ipsum going here. We'll use this as the description. I wonder if that's too much text, let's see. No, that's, that's perfect. But I need to target this text now, right? I wanna change the line height of the text. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna do another ampersand. And the way I read it in my mind is, all right, I'm gonna style my article card and the article card body and the article card text. So there's my text and I'm gonna do line height of 1.5, let's say. I'll save and go back and there's my line height change right there. This can say, read more. Look how I'm just popping back and forth, tab to tab, right? And if you have keyboard shortcuts for navigating between your tabs, it's even much faster uh, than scrolling up here and actually clicking. Uh, but I want you guys to kind of see what I'm doing, right? So I, I'm styling my body, I'm styling my text, and I'm gonna show you the output of how this works in just a second. But look, I, I mean, I basically styled my card. Oh, we need to do the rounded corners, okay? Um, which it's already border radius var S. And if you see, let me show you guys on the front end. Um, oh, I hit refresh just out of habit, didn't even need to. 
it is rounding the corners here. It's just not rounding them up here because the image is covering up the radius on the top. Whenever this happens to you, use overflow hidden on your whole wrapper, your entire card, and it'll take care of it. So I'm gonna come up here. Remember, these are the styles to article card. These are the styles to the body. These are the styles to the text. So I'm gonna say overflow hidden, save, go back to the front end and boom, it live updates right there. So the reason I really like this nesting is it creates a lot more organization. I've effectively created one component and I'm styling parts of the component within the component itself versus in writing CSS, you would have to be writing it like this. You would have to write article card um, first, right? There would be your styles there. Then you'd come down here and write article card again, double underscore body and open it and write your styles there. Come down here, write article card. You're writing this article card over and over and over again. There could be 10 different components. You're writing article card, article card, article card. Your entire life is writing article card, right? But with SAS, you write article card once and then you just, List out the components that are inside of it or the elements that are inside of the block, right? And my body and my text and my link and my this and my that. And you just, it is all one component. And then somebody comes along behind you and they realize, oh, look, here's a component. Here's the elements of the component. And then let's look at the actual front end, okay? So I'm gonna do a view source here so you guys can see what the output looks like. Uh, why am I not seeing it? Let's try this again. There we go, view page source. And I'm just gonna search for code box real quick. And there's my style sheet. And here we go, check this out. So it, it wrote my article card for me. It appended double underscore body for here. It's writing actual CSS, right? It's not showing up the way I wrote it because SAS processes what you write and it processes its nesting out into actual CSS. So. This is one example of, yes, there's efficiency in that. Doesn't look like much, but when you're doing a lot of complex CSS with SAS, it saves a tremendous amount of time and it keeps everything super organized. And that's just one, that's like the most basic feature of SAS. SAS does so much more powerful stuff. Let's look at one more feature. We can look at variables. So in regular CSS, you have to open your root and you have to define variables like this, like my variable, and then you can put like a value or something like that. That's a little bit complicated for some people. And you have some limitations there in how you can use these. In SAS, you define variables like this with a dollar sign. And we're gonna, we're gonna create two variables here. We're gonna create a card padding variable and we're gonna create a card gap variable. So I'm gonna do card padding and my card padding is 2M. And then I'm gonna create a card gap, which is gonna be 1M and I'm gonna hit save. And what you're gonna see here is I now have defined what are effectively tokens, global tokens that are gonna be placeholders for these static values right here. Because a card, yeah, I have an article card, but what if I create other kinds of cards? And I want all my cards to basically have the same padding. And I want all my cards to basically have the same gap. If I created 10 different card styles and they were all padding 2M and I decided, you know what? I want to change that to 1.5M. We want to tighten it up a little bit. And it's not just me. Maybe it's like the client comes along. It's always the client. It's always the client's fault, right? Just kidding. Just kidding, clients. All right. So the client's like, you know what? My, my friend Fred was a designer 70 years ago, and he thinks that the padding would be better if it was a little bit less, okay? And so we need to change padding from 2M to 1.5M. Do you wanna do that on every card style that you've done on the website? Or would you rather have a token that we can just change in one place and you have global control? We've talked about this before, scalability in what you're building, okay? So I'm gonna take this, and this is great about SAS, right? You don't have to use a var and a double dash and all this complicated nonsense. You can literally just use the token like that. So my padding is card padding and my gap is card gap. And I'm gonna hit save. So there's, I've defined the variables. Here I'm using the variables. We go look at the front end, perfect. Now here's that client suggestion, right? Hey, padding needs to be a little less. Okay, card padding, 1.5M. Gap goes to 0.75M. 
hit save, we go back to the front end, it's done. And it would be done across all of my different card styles just like that. So, and you can do more with variables in uh, SAS for sure, 100%. This is, again, scratching the surface, uh, but very, very powerful stuff. So we have nesting, we have variables, we have a better workflow of multi-tab styling in one tab, editing in another tab, previewing in another tab. You never lose your place. You never have to close panels, open panels, all this other stuff going on in Oxygen. Everything is happening in real time. Guys, tell me how this isn't better. Tell me how this isn't. Let me go back to, let me go back to camera. Tell me how this isn't way better. If this isn't way better, tell me how it's not way better. It's, it's, it's way better, undoubtedly way better. So WP code box, highly recommend you grab it. There's a link below in the description. Um, SAS, highly recommend you start experimenting with SAS. Just follow along with what I did here in the tutorial. Build your own article card, write your own little bit of SAS and WP code box, watch the changes happen in real time, practice your nesting, drop a couple of variables in, and then drop a comment below and say, more SaaS. We want more SaaS. If you want more SaaS, I'll give you more SaaS, both in my general disposition. I'll give salt. I'll give SaaS. I'll give whatever you guys want. All right. But drop your comments below. Hit like, hit subscribe. That's the end of this tutorial. I'll do more code box stuff. I'll do more SaaS stuff. And of course, you know, there's more oxygen stuff on the way. There's more business and marketing stuff on the way. It's fantastic. All right. That's it from me. I got a meeting to go to. I'm out. Peace.